Aloha, everyone, and welcome to our Warrior Webinar Accepted Parent Q&A. Thank you all for coming today. Congratulations to all of you on your students' acceptance. We know that you, parents, family, and guardians, this is just as much an acceptance for all of you as well. So congratulations. We are so excited that you could join us here today. We know you have so many questions before deciding with your student if UH Manoa is the right choice for you. Just a few housekeeping reminders. Again, this webinar today will be held webinar style, which means you can see us, but we can't see you. The chat has been disabled, so please place all questions in the Q&A feature and make sure to use the upvote for any questions that are similar to yours. We will get to the most popular questions um, first, so definitely use that upvote button. This event today will be recorded and posted to our YouTube page by the end of the week. In case you missed anything, you can go and watch it back. I'd like to now take the time to introduce you folks to our wonderful panel that will be joining us today and answering your questions. First up, we have me. <laughs> so my name is Kristen and I am one of the admissions counselors here at the university. Some of you may already know me from some of the previous webinars or events. Um, next up on the panel, we have Ryan Yamaguchi, who is our director of admissions. Abigail Huliganga Hergo, our Associate Director of Admissions. Jody Kuba, our Financial Aid Services Director. Dr. Kenny Lopez, our Assistant Director for Residential Academic Initiatives and Assessment. Before we get into our Q&A, our panelists are going to share some important updates from each of their departments. So I'm now going to pass the presentation over to Ryan, our Director of Admissions, who can share some admissions and campus updates with all of you today. Thank you, Kristen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy days and busy schedules to sit with us for this parent Q&A. Uh, we're very happy to be able to do this again for you this year. Um, this is, I think, our third year running that we've done these Q&A sessions virtually. Uh, it does give us an opportunity and a time to be able to listen to, field your questions, and give you hopefully provide you some answers to those questions as well uh, on what you are asking and to, in order to make your decision to attend the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Here at Manoa, here at Manoa, there are uh, several things that are coming up that will impact your students and so forth as far as what they can look for. You should have been receiving emails from my office. Uh, the Office of Admission that are giving you updates on the next steps that we need for students. Uh, recently with financial aid awards that have been going out and that working with your students to see what those aid packages look like, as well as some other updates as far as the next steps with our new warrior checklist and what you would need to do to prepare yourself for registration. Some of these updates also that I wanted to give you is about our situation here on campus. This spring semester, we did open up our doors and we did welcome our students back to campus. And we had a little hiatus at the start of the semester, but after the first month of going staying online courses due to the new variant of COVID, we did open up most of our courses for our students. We are at a point where about 60% of our courses are in person, 40% of them are either online or they're one of our here or there courses. Walking around campus, I do see a number of students, and I'm happy to see the students uh, going through. I can see them uh, participating in our campus eateries. I can see them participating at our new Warrior Recreation Center, as well as walking through our, our famous McCarthy Mall. So it is nice to see the life of, on campus has come back. Now that we have reached mark where as we as in the state of Hawaii, if you have been following the news, there have been many requirements that have been lifted in uh, on the COVID-19 situation. And so with these requirements being lifted, it has helped us to open up what we are doing here on campus to be able to serve our students in person. We held our Manoa experience this past weekend. If some of you are able to join us, thank you for joining us. If not, um, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you in the fall. But for the Manoa experience, it was our first time of doing an in-person 
big event on campus, our open house on campus. And it was widely, greatly attended. And it really did give a feel that we are getting back to normal. Currently right now with the COVID situation, we, while there are many of the mandates have been lifted, we are still holding to some to our vaccination requirements for our students, as well as wearing face coverings or face masks when we are in classroom, when students are in classrooms or when they are in their advising appointment and, and other situations where it's a very close, close contact communication. Um, in, in these, we do know that we're holding this until May 13th, which is the end of spring semester. Um, the reason why we're holding on to some of these mandates, even though it's opened up in the state of Hawaii, is that because those, the changes came midway through the cycle, and for us to try, and it's to give us a little bit more time to be able to work with our current students and not um, change too many things or confuse them too much about what's to be expected here this spring semester. And so it will last that way for the up until May 13th. Now, after May 13th, we are still working on what it, the policies are going to be and what's going to happen with the COVID-19 mandates. We will let you folks know when we do hear about those updates. We'll be sending communication to you folks to let you know on where the university stands come after May 13th. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Um, yeah, that's good, Kristen. Yeah, thank you for all of those updates. Sorry, let me turn my video back on. Next, we have Jody who will be sharing us some information and updates regarding financial aid. Thank you, Jody. Hi, I am Jody Kuban, the Director of Financial Aid. Uh, basically, hopefully you've already, um, your son or daughter have already been offered financial aid from our office. And if they have it, please make sure that they uh, check with our office. They can either email us or go to our virtual front desk, which is available every day um, from nine to three. And the virtual front desk is through Zoom and, and it's on our main page of our website that they can go in and check on the status of their financial aid. If they have any questions or if you have any concerns about your financial aid, please don't have to hesitate to ask not to share what we can, you know, what what more can be pro provided, but um, you can always ask if there's any other options that are available for the, your students. Um, as far as scholarships, majority of scholarships have been, uh, the deadlines have passed. Um, so it's basically looking in your communities, looking at nas national search sites that, um, might still have scholarships that are still available out there, but as far as the ones at the university, those deadlines have passed. And so if they haven't received an, an uh, award offer, um, they might be in the process of reviewing them at this time. So we get scholarships, um, notifications, um, all, all the time. So it, it might not happen until the summer. It might not happen even into, this, into the fall semester. So it's just a matter of when they make the decision of who is uh, awarded those scholarships. But, you know, like I said, you know, we're here to help um, and assist the students through the process. And if you folks have any questions, let us know. Um, if your folks' family income situation has changed um, based on from the 2020 information on the FAFSA, check with our office to see if there's any options available if, you know, if there's any type of income decrease since 2020. Uh, so we can see what's available. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Jody, for all of that helpful information. Next, we have everyone's favorite topic, student housing. So Kenny Lopez will be here to share information and updates from our housing office. Thank you, Kristen. Aloha and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Kristen mentioned, my name is Kenny Lopez and I serve as one of the assistant directors in student housing. And I will be answering um, a few questions about housing obviously at the end, but have a few different um, points that I would like to cover before we get started 
here for the, you all in this presentation. So next slide, Kristen, please. Awesome. So the housing application for the 22-23 academic year is available now. Uh, that can be found on our housing website, which is manoa.hawaii.edu backslash housing. You can find all um, important information regarding student housing on our website. Some of the advantages to living on campus, obviously the proximity to classes, the help adjusting students to college. Uh, students who live on campus are more likely to graduate in four years and have a higher GPA than those individuals who opt to live off. Uh, housing does not have a live on requirement, uh, but it's strongly encouraged for at least one year. Student housing works very um, hard to ensure the bridging between the curricular and the co-curricular experiences. A lot of that work is done through um, to some of our uh, residential learning programs, which is mentioned a little bit further below, our in-hall tutoring, um, advising, and all those different components that are really, really important for your student um, to transition and do well academically as well. Um, living on campus obviously will provide an opportunity for them to connect and live in close proximity with individuals who are very different from them. And that is obviously very, very important and a significant part of uh, the residential living experience that we uh, will provide for students living on campus. And obviously with um, where we're at um, kind of middle towards the latter end of the pandemic, um, obviously we will still be enforcing some COVID um, health um, and safety policies and protocols may remain in place. Um, and we will certainly uh, communicate that information as it ebbs and flows or hopefully goes away altogether. We will certainly uh, relay that information to our students and to the families um, as that information becomes available to us. The next slide, perfect. Um, so just some important information for all of you to know. Again, as I mentioned, um, application is currently available. The application deadline is May 1st. If a student applies by May 1st after committing to Manoa, they will be guaranteed a spot to live on campus. So very important that it happens um, by 11.59 on May 1st. Move-in week um, happens uh, the dates of August 16th and August 19th. Um, it is very, very important, I'll reiterate this as many times as possible, please do not make any travel arrangements at the moment because the move-in date, so we have those two dates, will be dependent upon what residence hall your student is assigned to. We will not unfortunately allow anyone to move in early, so we have some residence halls that are, will be moving in that Tuesday, other residence halls that will be moving in that Friday. So please, as much as possible, please hang tight. Um, until your student is um, contracted and then you can make travel arrangements accordingly. All students will also be required to make a moving appointment. When they're given that date, they will have to pick a time that they want to move in. And that's an hour block. Um, for us, um, main reason for that is um, to still have some physical distancing um, between families um, moving in so we can make sure all of the resources are available. Elevators are a little bit less busy, that we have laundry carts to assist, volunteers to assist, um, and help your students move into the residence halls. So again, I'll be answering a lot more questions as we uh, move forward, um, but all of our information can be found on our website, which is manoa.hawaii.edu backslash housing. Thank you, Kenny. So we are going to get to your questions. I just wanted to share our contact information that's on the screen. If we do not get to your question today, there are a lot of questions in the chat already. Make sure to reach out to us. We are super responsive. Um, feel free to call us, reach out to us via email, et cetera. Um, so we're gonna just start getting our questions answered. So let me pull up the first questions. Again, please use the upvote. I'm going to be answering questions um, with the most upvotes first. So. First, Kenny, first question is, sorry, it went to the bottom. Housing, we have read some negative reviews about the cleanliness and maintenance of the freshman dorms, rodents and mold specifically. I know from personal experience, rodents are just part of tropical living. That's me, not the question. Um, can you talk about what UH Manoa has done to upgrade or maintain freshman residence halls? Absolutely. Thank you for that question. Absolutely. We, we've done a few different pieces. So we certainly um, have heard your concerns about some of those pieces. So we recently have moved from a privatized uh, cleaning company uh, to having in-house custodial staff now that are available um, more regularly and um, will do things to our standard on campus. So that is certainly 
something that we are familiar with. And I think uh, to add on to Kristen's point about uh, pests and rodents and things like that, again, it is very much a, um, an unfortunate part of living in a tropical climate. So there will be different bugs and different things that folks may not be accustomed to on the continent or different places, uh, but we uh, promise that it is not a as a result of cleanliness, but instead as a result of living in a very humid tropical climate. Um, but again, I think with all of that being said, I think it's important that if the student does feel that the bathrooms are not being cleaned to their standard, they can absolutely please notify hall staff and we will certainly um, really that information up and make sure that facilities are cleaned and taken care of in the way that they should be taken care of. Thank you. Kenny, I'm gonna give you another question. I know this was answered in the presentation, but can you let us know the likely move-in dates for housing so we can plan for travel? Absolutely. So again, the dates are Tuesday, August 16th and Friday, August 19th. And again, as I mentioned, and I'll reiterate again, uh, please hold off as much as you possibly can for travel dates because your students move-in date will determine on what community they're assigned to. Great, thank you. The next question, what types of activities are there in the fall for freshmen to get to know each other? Abby or Ryan? Or Kenny? Sure, so I'll speak about housing specifically. So again, Tuesday and Friday are about um, a week before the official start of class. So in housing, we have something called H12, the Housing Weeks Welcome where every single day the students will have a plethora of different events that will get, help them get one, get to know each other on the floor in the residence hall community. So we have events during the daytime and we also have events, events at night called late night events. Um, so we have a plethora of those as well as things to help them get acclimated to find their classes, to what to expect the first week of school, all those different components. So it is gonna be a jam packed week of different events that they have um, in preparation for school. Great, thank you. On, yeah. on the first day of school, there's also going to be a Valina Manoa event, uh, and that is when all of the departments and programs and some of the clubs are also going to have booths out on the first day of school. During that, uh, for the first two weeks, usually there are like club events as well too, uh, where they promote the different clubs on campus um, at the campus center. Uh, so we're excited to have that back again as well, too. But you can mark on your calendar your first day of school, uh, which is going to be August 22nd. That is going to be the Valina Manoa event. Now, leading up to that, there's other events as well, too, like attending the uh, virtual new student orientation um, as well. And then right now, students can also join our incoming Facebook page, also our Instagram as well, too. Uh, that has been popular ways for students to connect with each other even prior to the school year starting. Thank you. And then when, when the semester does begin, you know, there are also our, our athletic events and our intramural sports that are looking to return. Well, intramural sports are looking to return, but our athletic events that will be here on campus that students can participate in. You know, just as a reminder, last year was the first year since I think like 1912 that we actually had a football game, a University of Hawaii football game on campus. And so these events, again, are, are free for our students to be able to attend. The football game, any of our volleyball or basketball games within the San Fair Center, baseball, softball games within our Les Murakami Stadium and our softball stadium. Students can attend this uh, for free. And, you know, this coming year, this coming fall semester, we, we, football will be played again on campus. And so these are also other opportunities for our students to be able to interact with each other, get to know each other, and also to cheer on um, their school. Thank you, Ryan. The next question. Can you please discuss the safety on campus and the presence of campus, please? Um, I can answer that one. We have 24 seven campus security. Um, the University of Hawaii itself is located in the largest city in the state. So if your student was gonna go to any city, we would say to take the same precautions you would um, take going to New York City, Detroit, wherever. Um, but it is located the school itself in a residential neighborhood in a very nice area. Um, if anything were to happen, your student can sign up for campus alerts to be sent to their email as well as their phones. Um, so they're just going to be in the know of what's happening. Um, we also have 72 blue light boxes around campus. So if the student ever feels unsafe, they can just push that box. Um, it will start recording and also call campus police to their location. And then we also have an app students can use. So um, I forgot the name of the app, but it will basically Manoa Guardian app. 
that's the name. <laughs> yes, it will. Um, you put a timer on your phone and if you don't make it to your location by that time, it will call your emergency contacts. Um, so we do have a lot of different options for students to feel safe on campus. Anyone else? Okay. The next question for Kenny, my child filled out the housing application already. When will she hear any further information? And when can I put down the housing deposit? Sure. Well, the housing, de uh, so we will not touch the housing applications until after the priority deadline, which is May 1st. So starting mid-May is when um, information will start going out to students in, on a rolling basis. Um, once that co their student is contracted, they will have to sign their contract and submit their $400 deposit at that point. So again, very important that um, with all the things that are happening, graduation, vacations, proms, all the other jazz, that folks please um, are asking the students to regularly check their Hawaii email address because all that information will be sent uh, in that modality of information. Thank you, Kenny. Another question for you. What are the options for freshman housing? Do they have to be in the freshman buildings only or can they go to other buildings? What if they want single occupancy housing? Sure. So I'll answer the first part. Most of our freshmen will live in the Holly Aloha Towers. That is just where the majority of our freshmen are concentrated. We do have a sprinkling of our first year students who live in Holly Kahawai, Holly Lalima as well as some that will live in Johnson Hall. So you are not um, expected to live in Holly Aloha. You can opt, um, when you fill out your housing application, you will be able to uh, prioritize three different buildings. So you can rank whatever you would like to um, in your housing application. In terms of singles, we have very, very, very um, select number or a very small number of singles. Uh, so that is available on a first come first serve once uh, students have submitted their housing applications. I think I answered all parts of that. Please let me know if I didn't. Yes. Um, what is required to maintain WUI status? So for the WUI status, the main thing is to stay within good standing at the university. Good standing at the university as you continue on is the minimum VP of a 2.0. Um, and as long as you are continually enrolled. And so continually enrolled, meaning that you're signed up for classes every semester, fall and spring, the Western Undergraduate Exchange residency rate can stay with you throughout that time. Thank you, Ryan. The next question for Kenny. My daughter is curious about how roommates are assigned and when they may find out. Sure. So we do not use any uh, roommate matching database systems. Um, we've learned that those typically don't work uh, because students aren't always the most authentic and honest when they're answering those. Um, plus, they may not always be the ones filling them out. So what we do is we use, um, in the housing application, we have three very basic questions and we do um, a completely random um, roommate matching system or uh, method. Uh, so we ask, um, the students come in with an open mind to live and uh, alongside someone who may be completely different from them and learn from those experiences of sharing a space with someone different from them. Um, and that information with the roommate's information, if that is disclosed, that will be released um, a little bit closer to uh, the official move-in day. Um, and again, the students all have to select whether they want that information to be released or not. So if that information is not released, it, unfortunately, we can't share that with anybody. Thank you, Kenny. Um, just again, a reminder, if you see any questions that are similar to what you'd like to ask, please use our upvote button and I will get to those questions in priority order. So the next question we have is, do you charge for health insurance? Can we decline school health insurance and use our own? How do we know if our insurance can be used on campus? You want to start your right? You want to go? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. Just add on if I'm missing anything. So okay. you don't have to participate in the UH Health um, Services health insurance if you already have one. So if your child is a dependent under your your health insurance, uh, they can use that. They can double check with UH Health Services to find out whether or not your um, health, health insurance is accepted. Um, but the, you don't have to decline anything. Um, it's not automatically given to students if you already have it. Now, if your student does not have health insurance, there are plans that they can um, be a part of and purchase through UH Health Services. But if they're already on your own, uh, there's no extra step that needs to be taken. Just double check with um, our UH Health Services office if they will accept your form of insurance. 
Thank you, Adam. And, and, and yes. the other portion of the question on what insurance can be used, all major carriers of insurance can be used here in Hawaii. Um, primarily like Blue Cross, I know is one. Blue Cross, Blue Shield are some of the some of the common health insurance types that are out there. It can be used here in Hawaii. Thank you. The next question, is there a payment plan for tuition or do you have to pay it all at one time? Yes, there are payment plans that will be with our cashier's office. We can put that information in our chat. Um, it does cost, I believe, $30 to take part in an installment plan, um, but we do have that option available for you. So next question, Aloha, can you please talk about the opportunities to study abroad and UH partnerships with schools on the mainland? Thank you. Yeah, so there's, um, that's actually three different kind of um, exchange opportunities that are available. So I'll break it up a little bit. So there, we do have a traditional study abroad, right? This is when a student goes uh, with another group of students to certain locations. Um, there are specific programs for that. We'll put that in the chat um, so you can take a look at those study abroad programs. Then there's also something called Manoa International Exchange. That is also a study abroad program, but it's a one for one. So we're exchanging a student right from a from another university uh, from abroad. Um, so most of the times these students are traveling individually or with a small group uh, versus in study abroad, you're going with a bunch of students right uh, from the UH Manoa campus. Now you said um, partnerships with the mainland. So I, I think that you're referring to something that's called National Student Exchange. We also have that program available too. We have partnerships with select public universities. Uh, we'll also put that in the chat as well for National Student Exchange. You can see what kind of uh, programs that we have for that. For all of them, um, there is some special advising that students would uh, need to go through if they're interested in doing either study abroad, Manoa International Exchange or National Student Exchange they can talk to an advisor as early as their first semester as a freshman and may be able to leave in as early as their second semester as a freshman, um, depending on the timing and the location for it. Um, but those three services are available. Thank you. Sorry, let me bring up the questions again. When will scholarship offers be sent? I can start that. If you are applying for uh, new warrior scholarships, those have been sent to your email um, already. So if you haven't received anything, um, you can always contact our scholarship um, email. I can put that in the chat as well. Um, for other scholarships on campus, um, I believe a lot of them come out during the month of April, um, but because they are all from all different offices, you may find out later than that as well. Right. And like I said earlier, we get notified throughout the summer into the fall semester. So it could be any, at any time. So if you know who you applied with, um, I, would, I would check with them to contact them to find out what, what is the time frame for when scholarships will be offered. Thank you, Jody. Next question, can you please give us an overview of the mental health services available at UH Manoa? So here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, we have several things, several services that are provided for students. Um, one is that if, if your students are requiring any type of assistance through classes, to, uh, to learning classes, um, helping to take notes or require, require those needs, we have a Kokua Services Office that is available for students to be able to talk to about um, certain, certain learning requirements that they have for class. Um, within our student services building here where the House Office of Admissions is located, there are a number of different service offices that are available to students from our Student uh, Counseling and Development Center um, to other centers in which students can go into a safe environment in, in order to, be, um, in order to uh, discuss their situation. Thank I will you. add to that yeah. as well, um, Christian, if I may, uh, for any student who lives on campus, if they are um, in a crisis situation that they need to speak to a uh, psychologist immediately, we have those available after hours. We call them counselors in residence. So they live on campus with our students and they are available anytime that the counseling in, uh, student development center is closed. So 4.30 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next morning. And they are available, again, as I mentioned, for emergency situations only. Um, and not for your standard counseling appointments. That's very helpful to know. 
Next question for you, Kenny. Are there storage options between years for students who not live do not live nearby? There are. So uh, students will have to um, specifically get into a contract with a different company. Um, there is a lot of different um, storage companies around uh, the Manoa campus as well as Honolulu uh, as a whole um, that students can um, get month-to-month -month contracts, things like that, to store their larger items um, for the summer until they return back to campus. So it is very, very common. Thank you, Kenny. The next question is for Ryan, maybe what percentage of classes will be held in person in the fall in 2022? If you know, please. Um, actually, this year, you know, this spring semester, we were looking at about a 60% to 40%, 60% being in person. Going into the fall semester, we're actually looking at it even higher than that 60%. It's, it's over 70, maybe closer to almost 80% of our courses are in person. We do like to keep some of our courses online because through the pandemic, we have found that there are certain populations of students that do enjoy taking online courses and that the online courses help to fit within their schedules, their busy work schedules or, or life or home schedules. Um, and so it does help out to have some online courses. So we're looking right at about that 70-30 split for fall semester uh, in the number of in-person classes versus online courses. Thank you, Ryan. The next question is for Jody. Can you please explain the difference between the approximately $36,000 cost of tuition, housing, et cetera, and the parent contribution of $59,000? So when you do the FAFSA, based on the information that you're providing, whether it's income, uh, number of people in the household, those kinds of things, the FAFSA then has what they call a estimated family contribution of what they feel the parents should, oh, what they should be paying towards their son or daughter's um, college for a year. But because we know that, not saying it's not available to them, but if you don't have those funds available and it is a, you know, it's just a calculation and it's just estimated. We offer the Parent PLUS loan um, based on our cost of attendance, our budget, which is tuition and fees, room and board, books and supplies, you know, personal expenses, those kinds of things. And it's whether you want to take out and, it, and it's up to you. It's for you to apply for the Parent PLUS loan, be approved. And those funds would be then sent to the university. It would help pay down or pay off any expenses at the university. And then the whether you indicated on your parent um, applica loan application is that if you uh, if there's any excess, whether you want it to go back to you as a parent or if you want it to go to your to your child to help them cover any other living cost expenses. But it's, it's a matter of the, the parent contribution is just determining what type of aid would be um, eligible to the student. Um, so basically, based on that example, I would say that um, you folks didn't show financial need. And that's, that's what it's saying, yeah, um, based on the FAFSA, based on the federal program. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Jody. This next question might be for you as well. Is housing, are housing and meal plans, sorry, my question shifted to the bottom. Are housing and meal plans paid separate from tuition? Is there a payment plan, which we know that there is, we discussed earlier. Can you pay with a credit card? Yes, you can. Are there additional fees for paying on the payment plan with a credit card? So Jody, do you know any of that? Um, so I'm, I know you can pay with a credit card and there's no fee that's going to be charged if you use a credit card to make any type of payment. If you go on the payment plan, there is that $30 payment plan fee that uh, Kristen was talking about. I just don't, I know it's tied to an account that you have to set up as far as where the money is coming from. So my, my feeling is that it's to a bank account that you have to tie to the payment plan and it doesn't tie to a, um, 
a credit card, but I might be wrong. <laughs> I've never had that question before, actually. And if I could, I would have done the same thing and use my credit card. Um, but if anything, if you are trying to use your credit card as much as possible, once, once housing starts to, once you register and once housing uh, assignment is posted onto the student's account, whether you want to create your own version, sorry, maybe I'm not supposed to tell you this, but your own version of a payment plan is that you can start going in and just start making, you're not required to make the full payment, um, you can actually adjust it. Sorry, maybe I'm giving that too much information, but you can pay a lesser amount <laughs> and you can use your credit card. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. Don't, don't, don't share this with everybody. <laughs> the, the, the room and board fees are all go onto the student account. So it will all be lumped in together. Right. And any payment questions, I know I'm deferring to jo Jody because she's just the money woman in the chat, but um, that's actually with our cashier's office. So I linked their information in the chat. So if you have any questions about payment plans or paying, um, definitely contact our cashier's office. I do know and have heard from a lot of um, my parents that I work with that a lot of them choose to pay the tuition with their credit cards like Hawaiian Airlines or Southwest so they can acquire a lot of miles and then use those miles for their students. Um, so that's something to think about. Not encouraging anyone to get a credit card, but if you're already going to pay with one, that's just the option there is as well. Next question is regarding residency. Are you able to become a resident of Hawaii after one year? So the short answer is yes, you can gain residency after one year, but there are a number of different stipulations that you have to go through and documentation that you need to provide in order to become a resident. Um, it is physical presence within the state of Hawaii for 12 consecutive months. It's also paying Hawaii state income taxes as well too. If your student, uh, you know, if, if your student is a, is an incoming freshman or a, a minor and is still claimed as a dependent on your taxes and your taxes are being paid in another state and you're paying taxes in another state like California or whatnot, that's gonna negate this whole process as well too. Um, there, there are a number of different other pieces that need to be submitted for students uh, if they do wanna gain residency after that first year. What I would suggest is to contact the Office of Admissions and to speak with one of our residency officers because as you ask your questions, everyone, situation may be unique, may be different, uh, depending on what criteria. And I think to try to go through that all within, we, we could take a good amount of time to go through those scenarios. So please, yes, contact the Office of Admissions, ask to speak to a residency officer. And just to clarify, there's a difference between becoming a Hawaii resident and becoming a Hawaii resident for tuition purposes. So I believe the question that is being asked is trying to become a resident for tuition purposes to be under that resident bracket, um, which um, what Ryan was just explaining is for trying to become a resident for tuition purposes. Thank you, both of you. Next question, one of my favorites, is there free transportation for students to go places like grocery stores? So all students receive a U-Pass, so they'll be able to go on the bus anytime they'd like um, and not have to pay anything. This city bus goes everywhere on Oahu. So you can jump on it and go to the North Shore, West Side, East Side, whatever you'd like to do. You can also um, get on it. It goes straight through the campus, bus number 13, over into Waikiki. You can pick up groceries, go surfing, whatever you'd like. Um, so definitely take the bus while you're here. Um, so yeah, the bus will take you everywhere. Next question. Are freshmen guaranteed housing in the, the dorms? How about after? Sure. So all students who apply by May 1st are guaranteed a spot to live on campus. So again, priority deadline is May 1st. After that, it's on space availability. And we do have um, housing options for all grades of students. So sophomores and above can still live with us through sophomore, junior, senior, graduate school years, and all of the above. Um, you just have to go through the uh, renewal process, um, essentially to squat in spaces that you want and you are able to live with us as long as you are in good standing with the university housing and are you making your payments. Okay. Next question for Jody. 
can you please speak about FAFSA and what happens after you receive an acceptance from them? Some of it was partial for the student and some for the parents, and it was a little confusing. So financial aid is based on um, what they, you know, that estimated family contribution and that determines what type of aid the student is available um, and eligible to receive. Um, as a freshman, there's only a certain limited amount of student loans that they're avail that's available to them, which is basically $5,500 for the academic year for fall, spring. And it's based on the fact that they don't wanna overburden student, um, students with loan debt so early in their lives. So what happens is, and, and the, the philosophy of the federal financial aid program is that, that you know, the families are the main source of funding their higher education, no matter what. Yeah, so while they're in school going through uh, their four years of bachelor's degree, basically they're considered a dependent in most cases where it's based on the parental information on the FAFSA and the burden is really on the parents to fund the student's education. But if you have folks have any other questions, just let me know. Thank you, Jody. Next question is, is WUI automatic if you are from California? So WUI is automatic based on the information you put on your general admissions application. And if you are from a WUI state, um, you do not need to fill out another application. And the good thing about the UH system is that um, it, it qualifies for every undergraduate major. So if you change your major, you'd still get buoy. Um, so no need to do another application. If you have any residency questions at all, you can always email the admissions office so we can help connect you with one of our residency counselors. Next question, please explain the meal plans. How do they work? Are students given a card to swipe when making payments? How do they loan more funds? So the meals plans are going to be on your one card, which is your ID that you'll use. So there are two different options that students can, um, will have. They will have a variety of different meal plans to pick from. So it starts as low as 7, 10, 14, or 19 meals a week. On top of that, those meals are associated with points that are good for the entire semester. So points are um, useful when you're going to Starbucks and you want to grab a quick coffee, um, things like that. Your meals primarily should be used when you're going to um, the two dining facilities that we have that are all you care to eat. Those prices are additional to the, um, the room cost because of the variety of different options that you have. And as I mentioned, those are use it or lose it week to week. So on Saturday night, our students will go to the market and use whatever meals they have left over uh, to buy um, grocery type items, um, bottles of water, chips, um, Pop-Tarts, whatever they want to, things like that. So um, that's essentially for a very quick snapshot of what our meal plans look like. Um, if folks have other questions, uh, certainly our housing website has a lot of that information as well as our uh, Sodexo um, uh, website, which is our main food provider here on campus. Thank you, Kenny. How do freshmen students register for classes? in fall and also summer 2022. I just wanna um, plug in quick that next week, April 12th, Tuesday, April 12th, same time, 2 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. We're going to be having a webinar with um, the Manoa Advising Center as well as first year programs. So they'll be here to help answer a lot of um, questions regarding, regarding course registration for your students. So definitely tell your, your son, daughter, child to log on so that they can um, learn more information about course registration. Um, but students will register for classes in late May. They will be notified to, to register for classes and to meet with their advisor before they do so. 
And if they're going to take summer courses, uh, which I think is the second part of that question, um, since summer comes before the fall semester, if you have a student that is interested in taking summer courses, uh, they will have to fill out an application with Outreach College um, to take a summer course. Uh, if your student is an incoming freshman, there is an early start program uh, that they can participate in as well, too. We'll go ahead and put that in the chat if your student fits that description to take summer classes before the fall semester. Thank you, Abigail. The next question is for Kenny. My daughter is wondering the chances of getting the roommate she requested on her housing application. Sure. If both students fill out their housing applications with all their information, their name, their ID number, and all their room um, options match, um, we will try our hardest to make that happen. But unfortunately, that always um, doesn't. So I will be honest and transparent about that, that we will certainly, we, it's a preference and we will try our hardest to make sure it happens, but uh, can't always uh, because of where students um, choose or different priorities that students have. So again, we will always try. Um, if it doesn't happen uh, about two and a half weeks into the semester, we have what we call the open transfer period where students can move around um, if there are spaces available and opt to live with their friend if they wanted to or someone who they met on campus. Thank you, Kenny. The next question is, when do we need to send in AP class scores? Sorry, every time someone uploads, it goes down. Um, AP class scores, and how is this applied to college credit? So AP scores can be sent to the Office of Admissions. Uh, once, as, once you go to the College Board website, you can send those scores to us. When we receive these scores, we have a group of individuals in our office that will do an evaluation of the score. Depending on the score, it could be anywhere between a three to a five, and it depends on the exam as well. But between a three to a five, it could give you credit for a particular course. So for example, like AP History at a three, it may give you three credits for one of our history courses. But if you had a four or five, it could give you six credits for two of our courses that we do have here for history. Um, this will be placed onto the student's record. It'll look like a transfer credit evaluation. Um, then that's based upon the score itself, and it could satisfy some courses here at the institution. So have those scores sent into our office. Thank you, Ryan. The next question is, how easy are part-time jobs to find? So we have over 4,000 jobs available on campus, so students, once they register for classes, can start applying to jobs if they'd like. The great thing about these jobs is they're super flexible, so they work with students' class hours a lot of times and the pay is very competitive. So definitely an option if you wanna make some money while you're in school. Next question is, when do placement exams need to be taken? We can't find the math placement test online. This is gonna be de dependent on major. So not every uh, major is gonna require a placement exam. What we would recommend is, um, like for example, engineering usually has to take a math placement to connect with the advisor. So in this case, like if it is engineering, connect with the engineering advisor um, to see when placement exams are going to be available. So common placement exams would be anything related to um, like chemistry placement or math placement. Um, but if that is being required as part of your major, uh, then to please contact your academic advisor. Thank you, Abby. The next question for Kenny, what kind of items are allowed or not allowed in the dorms? Um, I do know you have an amazing list that's already ready on your website. Absolutely. So in our website, uh, manoa.hawaii.edu, uh, if you go to communities tab, you click down, it's um, a move in section of what items to bring and not to bring. So for example, items to bring, um, obviously a fan is highly encouraged. Um, uh, our beds are twin extra long, for example, so you should absolutely bring um, twin extra long bedding, things like that. Um, items not to bring, anything with an open heating element are things that are not allowed. Uh, for example, uh, George Foreman uh, cook things um, or uh, string lights, for example, is another one that's um, currently uh, prohibited on campus, extension cords, things like that are not, are prohibited. And mostly things that could potentially catch on fire, things like that are prohibited. So certainly if you look on our housing website, it has a pretty um, exhaustive, not exhaustive, but close to exhaustive list of what items are not allowed and what items you should consider bringing to campus. 
Next question, a fun one. How is island life for students from the mainland in your experience? I can take that one. So I am from continental US from New York um, and I moved out here with ever, without ever visiting. Um, it's, there's a lot of things to do on the island. There, I came out here with not an athletic bone in my body and now I have, um, I'm part of a competitive paddling team and I golf and hike. Um, so a lot of students like to take part in a lot of outdoor activities, like any ocean activities as well as hiking is very popular here due to our location. Um, but there's also a lot of cultural events here. There's little pop-ups like Eat the Street. You can go to see food trucks. Um, I enjoy musical theater. There's Broadway in Hawaii. They come out here and do Hamilton, Cats, et cetera. Um, also, there's the beautiful Hawaii Symphony Orchestra that I go to pretty much every month. They have really cheap student tickets. Um, so really there's everything out here for um, students, just like on the mainland there's, or the continental US, there's a lot of things out here for people to do and take part in. So next question, what days are orientation parent activities for those coming from out of state? So news and orientation um, is all going to be virtual and online. It's going to be around July uh, and August. The so students will get information about that. We'll also put it in the chat, um, their website and their contact information. I think they're still working out the details right now. So I didn't see um, anything specific for parent uh, orientation at this time, but we'll go ahead and put that in the chat so you can take a look at it. But for virtual orientation, it's going to be around July, August timeframe, and it's all going to be virtual. Thank you, Abby. Um, so we do have about five minutes or so left. We have almost 300 questions in the queue, so we are not going to get to all of them. So we will um, email out the answers to a lot of these questions, to all of these questions afterwards. It may take, um, we're hoping to get out by the end of the week, but it may take a little longer because there are so many questions. So if you have anything that's urgent, feel free to um, email our office or call our office in the meantime. But definitely feel free to ask your questions. It just may take a little bit longer to get to the 300 questions. Um, so I might skip around a little, but first question that's coming up is, I would like to know about security on campus, which I covered earlier, um, but Kenny, maybe you can speak about it at the residence halls. What is the process of getting in and out of the rooms and buildings? Are there key cards? Is there UH security staff in the lobbies? What about visitors? Sure. So we do not have security in our buildings. Uh, like a uniformed officer of any sort. Um, all of our residence halls are, uh, students will need to have a room key in order to get in their key cards. Uh, you swipe it to come in the front door, again, to go up the elevator stairwell, and again, to go into your room. Um, so again, as we mentioned, um, our residence halls are safe. Um, a lot of the crime that does happen on campus, unfortunately, is a crime of opportunity. So we um, very much use a philosophy that uh, the airports do. You see something, say something, um, there's a lot more students than there are staff, so we just want to ensure the safety of everyone because that is obviously our top priority on campus. Um, as we mentioned, we do work very closely with our Department of Public Safety, with HPD if we need to, absolutely, um, to ensure the safety of everyone on campus. Okay. Can you cover this next question too? What are the university's procedures in a dorm if a student gets COVID? Sure. Um, if a student um, uh, does test positive or is even symptomatic, um, we have a very um, well now uh, planned out system of what's going to happen. So the student will um, be removed from their community living space and will put, be put into an isolation space where they will receive um, a meal every time the uh, food services is provided, um, where they will be remaining in isolation until they have been cleared by medical professionals. So we will as soon as we find out about that, we will certainly um, start the process and make sure that the students um, and the rest of their community is safe. Thank you, Kenny. Next question is, if such a large portion of courses are still online, Ryan, why would an out-of-state student pay the full cost of tuition and dorms? So actually for fall semester, for spring semester, we are about 60%, 40%, but for fall semester, we are looking at even more majority of our courses to be in person and trying to get back to our new normal of having the students be here on campus with us. So it is looking at more like that 70, even 80% of our courses are all gonna be in person. So most of our students are gonna have their entire schedule to be in-person classes here at the university. 
and be able to be uh, interacting with our faculty, interacting with other students, other staff members, and taking part in our activities and the services that we provide here on, on campus. Thank you, Ryan. And then the next question is the student, is the university planning to hold classes for students this fall? Yes. Thank you. Um, next question, I visited recently and it appears that many of the student center was taped off for COVID and there seemed to be a lot of social distancing still. Will you be easing some of those restrictions to allow students to socialize more? Yeah, I yeah. the caution tape, yeah, was for the bookstore back entrance. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's going yeah. to be a, yeah, there's going to be actually a lot of different changes that are going to be coming because it was only on March 26th that the state of Hawaii opened up and really eased up on many of the mandates that were in place for COVID. So it is in the mid semester for us in spring. So there are certain things that are going to take a little while for us to be able to uh, change and to move around. But for fall semester, from what we are hearing, it is going to be everything should be opened up. For fall semester, um, a lot of different requirements are going to start to go away for fall semester. Hey, Ryan. Even the social distancing requirement. Yes, but people might already just do that because it's a preferred thing for some people now. Um, is free tutoring available on campus? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is. And there's actually a lot of resources Kenny probably will fill in um, as well, too. And I'll put a link. Uh, the Learning Assistance Center is one of those places that will have that. And they also have a nice little link of all the tutoring that's available. There's even a writing center that will help with students. And um, I'll pass it over to Kenny because I know that they have a lot of great tutoring services, even in the residence halls um, as well, too. But I'll put in the chat uh, the Learning Assistance Center and all of the tutoring that's available through there. So in the residence halls, we have a center that's specifically geared towards uh, tutoring, free tutoring after hours. So it's open um, four days a week. So Sunday through Thursday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So they tutor in all of the major classes that our students will typically have. Um, so yes, there are a, a plethora of different uh, tutoring options. As we mentioned, the Learning Assistant Center, the Learning Emporium, the Writing Center, um, as well as a variety of others on campus. Thank you, Kenny. And then the last question we're going to cover for today um, is, my daughter has a 504 plan at their current high school. I'm wondering if UH Manoa has a learning disability program that will give her accommodations on learning, and how does this process start? Are professors at UH Manoa very good at helping the students who need special help? So that one definitely is our COCUA program. Um, hopefully we can have one of our moderators put that up, the contact information for the program up in the chat. But for our COCUA program, they, they are the specific office that's set up for those students who do have any learning disabilities. They are also the ones, um, if you are, if your child is on one of the 504 plans, it, that's definitely the office to speak to and they'll be able to help with accommodation. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you, Kenny, Ryan, and Jody for helping today answer all these questions. Um, I know there are still over 300 questions now in the Q&A portion. So all of us will do our best um, to answer these as fast as possible and get them out to you. Um, again, if there's anything urgent or you want to be connected to another office that maybe we didn't mention today or you don't see their contact information, feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, our admissions, financial aid and housing are on the screen in front of you. You can also see how to find your academic advisor at the bottom. But any questions, um, feel free to reach out to us, but we will answer all these questions and send them out to you shortly. So stay tuned for that. That will be in your thank you email. Um, and again, we look forward to having all of you and your family, your students in the fall. Um, and any questions, again, really, really reach out to us. We are here to help you. Thank you again for coming. See you next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you.